Okay, we're ready to get started. And you can still barely hear me on the mic, but as those of you who already know, we know I'm a really loud person, so that's not going to be a very big issue at all. So, I'm assuming you all are here for the introductory Android course. If not, sorry, not much I can do about that there. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to be running the course. I'm Edwin Santos. That, my dashing partner over here is Josh Bueno. So, and we're going to show you. And today's course is going to focus. Today's workshop is going to focus mostly on designing uh, UI layouts for Android devices. Now, if you guys all installed Android Studio, Josh said the majority of you have. If anybody hasn't, raise your hand now. We can go over that stuff. Good. So, you have it. And what kind of computer are you running on? Oh, okay, that's close enough. <laughs> okay, so I don't think we're actually going to be making this anymore. Okay. Unless you want to continue, unless you want to keep staying with this. I'm good with whatever. All right, so if we're going to make it, I'd say then for today, let's design this layout. Unfortunately, you don't have the picture, so it's not. So I'm going to end up taking out the picture. It's just a silly little clip out I found online and just threw it up there. And pictures are a little bit awkward, so we probably spent about a half hour actually debugging it, a little, debugging the picture a little. So we're going to skip that for now. I'll explain what exactly that is and how it works. But you're going to have pretty much everything from. But you're going to have everything from the little coffee cup to the lower. So if, uh, when you write an Android layout, you're going to be writing in something called XML. XML is called the Extensible Markup Language. Now, has, has any of you ever made a website or anything like that before? Uh, have any of you ever used any kind of markup language at all? Similar concept. You declare tags, declare parameters within those tags, and that defines how the object that you create with those tags is going to appear on your screen. Uh, the Extensible Markup Language looks very similarly Except in that all the objects in there are defined for you. You just shape and mold the object as it sits. This is what a, this is what a simple block of XML text looks like. Notice how we have up here at the top. This is a text view example. The most important things that you need to know right now out of this slide is that we have an opening, an opening tag up here which declares what kind of object in the view is going to look like it's going to be, and the closing tag down here. Anything within those is going, to, is going to define the parameters of that text view object. And when you put a text view, sorry, question? No? Oh, I guess I'm going to go back. It's a little rusty. Well then, so whenever you put in any kind of item on the screen, it's just going to appear in the upper left hand corner. That's because that's how when you define, define any kind of object in a layout for Android, that's where it's initially set to. In order to decide how the object wants to, how you want the object to look on screen, you have to define it in a couple of, in layouts. Go ahead. So there are two main layouts that we'll be focusing on during this. Those are the most commonly used layouts throughout the entire Android ecosystem. That's a relative layout and a linear layout. A linear layout sets up all the objects in a linear fashion based upon the orientation that you, that you want, i.e. a horizontal one, in which case any objects you have on screen will fill, will fill up the screen from left to right, and a vertical one, which they'll fill up from top to bottom. The order is determined by the order in which you declare the views inside of your XML document. So if I have a button that is declared in the order of my XML document, button 1, 2, 3 in that order, in a horizontal text view, it will display as 1, 2, and 3. In a vertical one, it'll, it'll display as one, two, and three. The three being on the bottom, the three being on the bottom. Now, if you'll notice in this tag here, I have two layout uh, parameters defined here. And, uh, and within the quotations, I have wrap content. What those layouts define, I'm sorry, what those define for the layout is how large the, uh, how large the uh, layout will look, both height and width-wise. Wrap content means that these will dynamically size based upon what views you have inside of that. So when I have it set for wrap content, I can add as many views to that as I want within the, within the, uh, the uh, screen size parameters, and it'll resize those so that way they fit in the screen parameter. And so that way, depending on 
how I declare them, you can set them up so they can uh, EPE in space as well. Now, the orientation here, as I mentioned earlier, it determines whether you want to do things vertically. You want all of your views to be vertical or horizontal inside of the, inside of the linear layout. In this case, I have it declared vertically. So anything I declare within this layout is going to be stacked up vertically. Go ahead. Now, a relative layout is a little bit different because it gives you a lot more flexibility about where you're going to put things. So in this case, I have a so in this example here, I have a relative layout, and I have a couple of objects declared underneath it. In a relative layout, everything is based is spaced out based upon the relative locations of the edges of the screen and the relative location of every view in relation to each other each other view on the device. So in this case. I have a text view and a button, both declared in a relative layout. Also, they're wrapping the content. So this layout will also dynamically decide to resize based upon which views I have inside of it. So this text view here, I've declared a layout center in pedant. Now, I'm assuming you've all looked at some form of hierarchy, in which case you've seen a parent child structure before. Same idea in an XML. In this case, relative layout is the parent of the text view and the button. So with that parameter being declared there, it's going to put the button in the center of the display. I've also declared a label for the, uh, an identification for this text view as well. I'll go further into how identification works and what, and what it, it's used for is now is uh, later on. But for now, we just need to know that it's going to be a reference later on when I declare my button. In this case, I want my text view to be in the center of the screen, and my button to be directly below. So in this case, my button is going to go below my uh, text view, which I have declared as label. So I'm referencing that label here. Now, if you notice, these are two different lines when I, when I declare the labels. This symbol here, at plus ID, means that this is being declared as a new reference. This, at ID, mean that, means I'm referencing that already declared reference. It's the, same it's the same structure as with, as with a lot of languages where if you don't declare something beforehand, you can't really access it later. So it's, it's, kind of difficult, it's kind of difficult to access something that doesn't really exist yet. I did miss one thing, though, in this demonstration. If I were to build this as it sat right now, for example, oh, I wish I had some more. But anyway, I would have a button. Eh, we'll just use the screen. Oh, cool. You okay? Okay, I got it. So if I were to declare this as it currently sits, we're looking for a situation where we have our whole screen like this, we want our button in the middle, our text view in the middle, we want our button below it. This isn't how it works though because I left the parameter out. In this case, the button in relation to where, in relation to the parent, this is centered in the entire parent. But this button is, only set, is intended to be centered horizontally. I did not declare that here. I only declared that it's going to be below the label. So the actual location of the button in relation to the label will be over here. Because, can anybody tell me what? Is the first available position below the uh, text? What's that? Is the first available position below the text? Exactly. And again, as as the layout fills up, they will all fill from left to right. So in, a, so in this situation, since I didn't declare the center horizontal, which I'll show later on, this button will only be, will only appear directly below text on the far on the far left extreme of the display. <laughs> in order to get it centered, I'll have to make that declaration later. Okay, slide and hit the projection. So we're only going to go over a few types of views that you can put in there, the basic, the major four that we'll need for our app. And we're not going to do the one, so it'll be plans But anyway, uh, text view. 
text view is what can be used to display and format any kind of text on your display in a, in a location that you can find. There's a bunch of things that can be defined for Same thing, same as before, Android layout height, the width and layout height. These are extremely important. Without these, your app has no idea how to make these layouts actually look. They're, they have such high importance inside of the uh, inside of the layout that it won't even let you render the layout unless these are declared and have some form of argument with them. Most of the time, Android Studio is pretty friendly about that and will declare the layout with the layout height for you, but you need to define what kind of argument you want in there. There can be a couple of arguments in here. Wrap content is the most common one because you only want it to fit the objects that are there. You can also have uh, fill parent, which in, which in that case is going to take whatever layout is above it and it's going to fill it up entirely with it. Say you want a really big button on your screen. You can declare the button to have a layout with the height of fill parent and the button will fill up the entire display regarding padding of the layout, but we're not going to get to that. Uh, Android text, fairly self-explanatory. So this text right here is going to simply say a quantity. That is going to be what you're, what is displayed. For the, exa for the example, I declared it as such. This is actually bad practice though in Android apps when you want to, de when you want to uh, demobilize your app. So if you want to go internationally with it, this should actually be a declaration with a reference to the uh, strings.xml file. Because when, that, when you use the strings.xml file and you want to take your app international, in order to change the language, the user can simply choose, a set, choose in the setting to use a different strings.xml for, say, Spanish, French, Zimbabwean, any language that you define in the strings.xml that you want to use. Text style and size. Text style and text have two arguments. That, de that decides whether you can make the text bold or italic. And text size is kind of a little, a little different. This variable SP here is uh, technically, it's technically defined as size pixels, but it's only used specifically for text. So in order to keep this quick, I'm just going to simply say whenever you declare a text size, always make sure you have an integer value on that with SP afterwards. The one we need to focus on later on will be DP, which are density independent pixels that I can explain later on when we get the book. Actually, no, right now. <laughs> so the only other thing here is padding bottom. Now, you don't want things inside your layout simply stacking directly on top of each other, or else it's going to be extremely difficult to choose the right thing, to choose the right layout that you want to select as the user. So if you have four buttons that are directly next to each other, it's going to be kind of difficult to hit a button without hitting two or three other buttons. So in order to do that, we declare paddings around, the, around buttons or text or anything like that. And this is the minimum number of density independent pixels that will be displayed between any other view nearby this object. Now, for density independent displays, uh, dent, uh, density independent pixels, you can bring points back at you. It's an awkward concept. It comes back, it starts back from way when uh, devices had low resolution displays and higher resolution displays started to come about. And it's left in for the sake of compatibility with the Android apps. So I have three different displays here. I have a 240 by, 3, by 320 display. I have a 1920 by 1080 display. And what is the one? 2450 by 1440? Whatever, we're old, but anyway. So as so as display resolutions increased, the pixels the pixel density on the screen also increased. So if I were to declare something with just instead of density independent pixels, just pixels. It would show up, say instead I've got nine. Sure. If I declare nine pixels, this button would take up this whole large section of the screen. But on a device that's heat, that has a higher resolution like this, <coughs> it would only take up a section this big. And an even higher resolution would only take up a section that's this big. It would be really difficult to hit that button on your screen. So when you choose a density independent pixel, actually this is kind of a poor representation of the size here, but it will default to what it will look like on the lowest density display and instead maps that over to the large density display. So that way you get a more consistent view across all the different devices. 
image view. The, the, coffee, the coffee cup we had at the beginning of the app was an example of an image view. Using it, you can add different images into, into your Android app via the drawable folder, which is automatically created when you make a new project in Android Studio. So the image view is pretty straightforward. Generally with images, since you don't, unless you design the image yourself and you know exactly what the size of it's going to be, uh, you want to declare it as a wrap content, just so that way in the event your image turns out larger or smaller, you can change, you can change that later on once you, once you find that out. The important part though is this source parameter here, which is going to define what the image is going to be, what, where and what the image is going to be. In this case, it's going to be at drawable slash image. So at drawable is the folder that the image is stored inside. And in order to store that, you need a bunch of um, different resolutions based upon pixels. When I build the app, I simply just put the same ones in there because I only built it for one Android device, mine, and I didn't really care about the rest. But as an app developer, you need to pay attention to what kind of, to what the resolution of the different devices that your customer, your clientele will be using. And you'll have to pay attention to that. You'll have to pay attention to it that way. Buttons. Buttons are very straightforward. What's a button do? You click on it, right? That, that's it. That's all you need for it. You can do, so there's one extra parameter that I'll get to later because it's actually not just a button independent parameter, it's a parameter that can be applied to any layout. But for now, I simply have the button set to wrap content. Now, if I were to set this button up right now, it wouldn't show anything. Generally, if I have a wrap content display on that, I would declare a text for the button and have it wrap around the text of the button, which we'll show you when we get when we when we build our very basic layout here today. Move on. <coughs> Now, this is about where we're gonna where we're gonna get to today, where we're gonna start declaring ways you can add functionality to your app. In this case, we're gonna be using what's known as the on-click parameter. So when you declare your object, when you declare your view, it won't do anything when it's when it's touched by a user, and it'll just kind of sit there. A button will turn a button will turn slightly more gray, and then it'll kind of you'll kind of sit there being annoyed about why something doesn't work. So when you tie it, when you declare the on-click parameter, you're now setting the view, the layout XML, to look inside of the Java file that's attached to that in order to find a method that is, to, that is named the same as the on-click parameter in order to execute whenever that button is clicked. Oh, that's it for us. That's yourself, so we're, we're done with this one. So with these basic, uh, with these basic views, we're gonna start, we're gonna actually start making our own Android app. So we're going to get right into it and we're going to make a new project. When we make our new project here, I think I'm just going to need this project over here. Because I have a So I'm going to leave the main, the main project that we have going on open so I can take you through all the stuff that you're going to need in order to go through with that. But I'm going to walk you through, does anybody here, has anybody here ever made a new project in Android Studio? Okay, so then we're going to walk through the basics of making a new project. Once you go to File, New, Android Project, you'll be presented with this menu, which will ask you what you want to name your app. In this case, we're going to call the app just Java because it's also going to do order copy. And it's written mostly in Java, but that was a pun for after, after the fact. <laughs> for those of you, it's, this already came up once, um, who are running any Android device that has an API that has a version of Android uh, Jelly Bean or the low, those are currently being phased out and they only take out 15% of the market. So most of them, 
almost 90% of the time, you're now going to see an example where they want you to run the app. So the minimum SDK will be looked upon as 4.4, because that's current to date the most stable version of Android. Um, but we also find out what that will be stable. First, I hope it doesn't be stable. But any app that has a version of Android that's below that will not run this app. And now we're presented with the uh, activity, the activity wizard. This will set up when you choose one of these activities. It will set up the very basic Java that you can, the very basic layout that you need to get most of the activity working. You just need to you just need to design it, design any extra material that you want yourself. Isn't it? So for our case in our activity, we're going to choose an empty activity. So we're going to build, build the entire layout from scratch on this. And now you can name the activity at whatever you want. This is just a general part of the activity of the activity wizard. Since this is the first activity, you can name it main activity if you want. I'm going to get creative and call it main activity. So. That's how I'm leaving mine. You can name it whatever you want. But notice how afterwards you can choose whether or not you want to generate a layout file. If you're making an activity that doesn't really need a layout file, <coughs> it's an activity that to be triggered for something, for some sort of function within the app, then you won't need to generate a layout file. We're not going to worry about that. So we are going to generate a layout file. And this is going to be the name of activity underscore main. There's going to be a dot XML in it. This is where we're going to be working throughout, throughout this workshop. This is where we're going to generate all of our XML code. So if you click finish down here, this is the bus that you can't see. We'll have our new project being made. <laughs> and depending on the computer, it'll take a while. Mine will probably take a minute or so because I'm running on dinosaur technology. Uh, what's the difference between a blank activity and an empty activity? Uh, the difference between a blank activity and an empty activity is that blank activity, when it initially comes about, it'll have um, a menu, it'll have an action, it'll have an action bar, and now they decided to add in a floating button, which I don't really like the idea of having a floating button because not all apps use a floating floating button. But um, that's to get you started in the event that you want to start inputting layouts. I say the layout is more got geared towards IM applications, email applications, text messaging applications, things like that. Um, as you saw, there were a bunch of different activities that we could put in. <clears throat> so notice how all these different activities are already predefined for us. It really depends on what you want to get out of your app. In our case, since, we're, since our app isn't going to have any kind of chatting capabilities, we don't need <coughs> the, lar the large um, circular button here for the plus, unless we want to add some functionality to it. And unfortunately, functionality for the floating button is a little, a little bit obfuscated right now. And we could add a menu in later, but I can also show, but I can also show you how to add a very simple toolbar into the empty activity. So in my opinion for this, the empty activity is a lot, a lot better to start with because it shows you what goes on behind the scenes when you start building the activity, start building the layout instead of overwhelming the construction code. But uh, the other one would probably, the other one that I'd probably say that might have a, that you might have questions about is the full screen activity, where basically instead of um, having an action bar and a back button like is shown there, it's going to hide all of that, and it's also going to hide the status bar and the nav button. These uh, the rest of these activities here do not hide the nav bar or the status bar. So this is, this is great for, for um, apps where you want to show a video, where you want to play a game or something, or something like that, or in the case of an app I had to write, you want to track your users so they can't break anything inside the tablet. So that's basically a full screen activity. Again, we're going to stick to an empty activity for ease of use sake. Good question, though.
Okay, so if you open up open up your activity main.xml, you'll be greeted with a very fancy version of hello world that is written for you, thus, thus cheating every single traditionalist up to this date by writing the hello world for you instead of having you write it yourself. So as you can see in this XML file, we have our relative layout here, which is what we're going to base all of our, all, all of our extra XML off, and a very simple text view which simply says, hello world, with a wrap content. So what we're going to do here is, so what we're going to start with, is we're going to change that relative layout into a linear layout. Because everything inside this layout, inside of our Just Java app, if you look at the preview of the app over here, if you'll notice everything in this app is aligned in a nice straight row in the center of the screen. That's really nice. I like that a lot. <laughs> so, So in order to build this layout, I have a linear layout which define, which is going to define how a bunch of different layouts I have in here are going to, are going to set up. Underneath that, within <coughs> this first setup here, you can see I have a relative layout declared. That lets me set up the image of the text view. I'm just going to glance, I'm just going to gloss over this, this over this initial setup. We're all going to be building this setup. This shouldn't take this shouldn't take much very long at all. But I'm going to go over a quick explanation, then we're actually going to build. So I have a relative layout declared here, where I have the reference to the image, text, and the uh, actually both text options. One text option. Now, if you notice here, I have the layout width set to match parent. This works out to my advantage in the lin in the linear layout because now I can declare all these items to be centered horizontally and they'll be centered inside the entire app because the parent is just as wide as the app display itself. So when I declare that the relative layout is supposed to be as wide as that display, I can set it up to be, I can set it to be any object that would be centered horizontally, and as a result, it would be centered in the entire display. Notice how these are nested as well. So anything inside of your layout can be nested within a different layout. So at this point here, this is the fun one. So I have a relative layout here, which holds my text view. I know that's the text view here. With a linear layout inside of it that is declared that holds all my buttons and my increment text view. With another linear layout below that, with all my checkboxes. Don't worry about the fact that we didn't go over checkboxes. It's the, pretty much the exact same idea as a button. It's just there's slightly there's slight changes in the Java in the main code in order to in order to turn it off. And underneath that, I declare both of my text views for the price total, and then I have another linear layout down here for both the buttons. It's a lot of stuff. Does everybody agree with me? It's quite a lot of work in order to make something. Thankfully, XML makes it pretty simple. <coughs> okay, my partner in crime has suggested that we go over a little bit of uh, how to navigate the environment. And I'm assuming pretty much all of you use Eclipse, correct? It's got a slightly similar, slightly similar, similar layout to that, except for this huge thing over here, which I'm assuming you've all figured out at this point is where you can see that, where you can see what your app looks like at the current moment. That's called the preview pane. Everything that you need to access within the Android Studio can be accessed from these sidebars here. If you click on the project header there, this will show you all the files that are within your project. So inside the app here, I have a couple of things that I've declared. I have my implementation, my 
my, uh, my um, interface, my implementation of my interface, my main activity, my order activity. Those are all different activities that are going to be triggered based on what I'm doing within the code. Within the code. What world is something? I'm not sure. What's up? I don't know why I have a main activity, but that's okay. And from the uh, from what I said earlier, with the copy picture here, this is the drawable folder for the source of my Java picture. That's actually shown quite nicely here in the source in the source declaration here. That's where it pulls my Java picture from, so you can see that on, on all the apps. Notice how in here they're all declared as java.ping, and this is at drawable slash Java. This doesn't actually need this doesn't actually need the extension in order to define in order to define what it is that people can do. Yeah, so like your Android device knows like what its DPI is and is able to select intelligently one of those. Yes, specific. because uh, each DPI here is ref has a reference to a certain certain device a certain device setup that is predefined. Okay. So unfortunately, good question. I do not have an answer to what those exactly are. I do know for a fact though that um, 1920 by 1080 is under the XX HDPI. So I would assume that 1250 by 720 is actually HDPI. HDPI might be, um, I only have it, I, when I built this app, I used a Nexus uh, 5. So I had a 1920 by 1080 display, so I used an XX HDPI image. It's easier to scale the image down from a higher resolution to a lower resolution than it is to take the higher resolution image and try and scale it up. Sorry, to take the lower resolution image to try and scale it up to the higher resolution. So the be that's definitely the better option when you're designing, when you're designing any kind of image for an app to go as high as you can on the resolution and then scale it down later. Unless it's poor practice. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's okay, so now we're actually gonna get started. Oh, no, we're still, we're still going through this, this thing, aren't we? We're still going through the layout. Okay, a couple of important things that I probably should go a little longer. So, pretty <laughs> self-explanatory about the majority of this stuff here. This is your little tab section here, so you can open it, so you can open up multiple files and click the swap between them. This is your preview pane. This is your file button. This is the same button. This is the open button. This not. So down here is where we get to some very interesting things. These are where your consoles live. Very important. So when you, uh, we're going to do, at different points during this workshop, we're going to be doing logging inside the app. This Android monitor right here, if you have, whether you have an Android virtual device or you have an actual device connected to it, this is where you're going to see all of your log information. So if you just click a button and you, all you want to do is say, I've been clicked, this is where you're, this is where you're going to see if that's actually, if that actually happens on the Android. Nothing's going to pop up on the Android device to say that I've been clicking. Over here, this blank console is my Gradle console. Shift that kind of actually. Um, well, that's unfortunate. So if you see here, this is where you check on the build status of your app. Mistake, there's no red stuff anywhere, so it should build. There you go. This is where you'll find any errors that are required with the, that are within the building of the, of the app. I'll tell you how long it takes to build the app and what kind of libraries are required to build the app. If there's any actual issues with building the app itself, this is where it will tell you what the problem could be. Underneath the messages header, you can click on that. Messages at the bottom of the screen. So this will tell you, this is very similar to the Gradle console, but if something's broken, let's see what's broken about this. 
Okay, so it's going to build, it's going to tell me that it's broken. But the Gradle console only tells me it's broken. It doesn't tell me what's broken. Now the messages, it tells me exactly what could be wrong with it in the file. The line though, uh, I don't think they put that in just yet. So if your main activity is 600 lines long and you put a semicolon somewhere, I thought with that. Also, similar, similar to how you put your setup, Pretty large um, setup. the app check, the Android Studio checks your syntax as it goes. So if you get something here or there, it'll leave a nice little red and yellow red line on the side here. The yellow lines represent um, represent um, the references that you haven't used yet. And there's actually some uh, green lines are recently resolved issues. Okay, I think we're ready to start actually building. So we're going to get started. We're going to we're going to actually start building this. Game. Okay. So back inside of our app here, the first thing we had was we had a linear layout on our display. So we're going to take this relative layout up in the front, up in the top here, and we're going to turn it into a linear layout like this, with like very something we like. Notice how both the opening and the closing tag have changed as you type in that, that linear layout. It saves you a lot of time. It saves you a lot of time when you started nesting different different layouts and you decide that you want to change your to use something else. So instead of instead of having to hunt through both the opening and the closing tag, now you just have to find the opening or the closing tag. This works both forwards and reverse. And we're going to take this text view. So we're just going to get rid of this text view for now, so we don't need it. Also, for our linear layout, we don't have an orientation defined. Generally, by the Generally, by default, a linear, a linear layout puts things in it vertically. But because we're going to be nesting a bunch of things, it'd be better if we declare which direction the linear layout is going to go. So we're going to declare. So can anybody can anybody tell me what we're going to declare on that? The orientation of the of the linear layout. This is the SDK that will be used. Schemas Android.com APK res Android. There's no real reason to change that unless you would, unless you use a view that requires map compatibility. But that will come up later on when we need to do more complicated things. Like that. So for the next part, of the, for the next part of our layout, now we're going to build. In this case, we actually don't need this relative layout because we're just going to have the text. No, no, we do still need the relative layout. Excuse me. So now we need our relative layout to hold our top part here. And by the way, that rendering problems window is going to be the most annoying thing you're going to see throughout the your entire kind of building UIs because in a lot of cases, it, Android is very, Android Studio is very funky ways and we should actually find the SDKs that we need. So sometimes it doesn't reference the layout. So you got to so you got to a lot of material to get that point. But anyway, so we want this 
text block, but this text view here, just Java, to be centered in our display. So in order to do that, we're going to take a, we're going to make a relative layout, nest it inside our linear layout, and we're going to throw it so that way it's, set, so that way it's uh, centered horizontally. Again, it won't be down here, where it's going to be more up here. So in order to do that, what kind of view am I going to declare? <laughs> What's that? I can't hear you. Yes, we are going to have a relative layout. Excuse me. So we're going to declare our own relative layout. <laughs> One thing I forgot to mention, guys, if anybody knows that I was having some trouble here trying to get my relative layout and linear layout to play, to play nicely, that's because when I declared my relative layout nested in here, I forgot this little caret symbol here. This little caret symbol means that I have finished defining the parameters for my relative layout itself. Without that caret symbol there, I won't be able to declare any other views within this relative layout. And this tag, closing tag here, will actually reference itself to the main clo to the closing tag of the parent spec. Uh, what's the difference between a linear layout and a relative layout? A linear layout will stack, it, will stack things up based upon their declaration inside of it. A relative layout lets me uh, declare where I want things based upon the relative location of the edges of the display and any other views that are on the display. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, from here, we want to put in a text object that just says, that just says Java. So in this case, does anybody remember how I declare an object that has text, a view that has text in it? Create text object? Yes. A text object inside of an XML document is called a text view. So again, we're going to declare our text, we're going to declare our text view. We're going to declare what um, it's going to. We're going to declare its width and height, which in this case is going to wrap content because we don't actually know how big Java is. We know it's four letters long. We don't know how big it's going to be on the display, etc. So from there, we're going to set we're going to set the text of the text view using the text parameter. And as you can see. As I update this text parameter here on the, on the little preview screen, it updates my text. Very tiny in the corner there. Does everybody have, this, does everybody have their preview look kind of similar to mine? If not, raise your hand, we can help you out. I hear a lot of typing, so I think I'll let you guys go.
<laughs> okay, so I think now, unless unless somebody doesn't have anything like that, I'm going to assume that you guys are all set since nobody really raised their hand. Okay, so now, this thing's really small. It's going to be really annoying to read every time. And it's supposed to be the title of our app. It's pretty pathetic with the title of so. So we're going to take that and we're going to make it bigger. So in order to do that, we're going to modify the size parameter as so. How big should I make this? Unfortunately, there's no parameter huge. <laughs> I like the 2,000 right behind me. What's that? 2,000. Got it. <laughs> Nope, it's too big, it won't let me. Oh, that's why. Yes, thank you. There we go. So let's try that 2000 one more time. Nope, it's still too big. So I'm going to make it a more modest size. Let's, let's say. We can do one of these. Hundred will fit perfectly. But the other problem is, like we said, we wanted this centered in our display. So I need to declare a parameter that will let me do that. In which case, that has to do with our relative layout. So in this case, since it's nested within a relative layout, I can declare its layout like this. the relative layout, but it's still on the left side. Can anybody know what question or you uh, question? Uh, what's what's up? the SP again with your text size? That is a uh, text specific pixel size. Okay. Is that what's wrong with it? Yeah. Um, nope. In the case of this, we, won't, we want to center the relative layout. The text alignment okay. will only give it its alignment based upon a relative object. A relative view. Was it? Where? The, <laughs> you said the right idea with the wrong location. Is it just uh, is it centered in the text view and the relative layout? It is centered in the relative layout. Is it that the relative layout is not put in a line to the left? Yes. Close, yes. Both of those ideas are pretty much exactly what I'm going for. Now, in my relative layout, if you look closely, I declare that the width is to be wrapped content, which means the width is only going to be as big as this Java object. So yes, it is centered inside of the inside of the relative layout, but it's not centered in the display. So in order to do, in order to center it inside of the display, I have to set the width of the relative layout to fill the parent the parent view, which will fill the display. So instead, if you replace the wrapped content. Fill parent. Can we just make everything bigger to fill up all the space? <laughs> What's that? Can we just make everything bigger? Uh, kind of. <laughs> That's pretty much kind of how it works. <laughs> it's not not big enough the first time. Just make it bigger. I mean, we have to help. We have to help people with the blind people with their accessibility issues. So. <laughs> so Stu, what's the difference between match parent and pay parent? What's that? What's the difference between match parent and fill parent? Fill parent's deprecated. Match parent is the currently set in standard. And it, they just and they just pulled that out like a month ago, so I'm still writing fill parent. Okay. There we go. So yes, 
But it's, it's, they're essentially the same thing, it's just that they're going through a transitional period, like pretty much Google, pretty much always is. There's no real point where they stop transitioning. Okay, that's really pretty much <coughs> old. Next up, we're going to move on to our next objects inside the layout, which are going to be this setup all down here. <laughs> where, we're going to, where we're going to show the quantity of the coffee that we've ordered. We're going to uh, put a couple buttons on there with a the text view, a set of checkboxes, our price, and our last two buttons. Uh, any problems? Does anybody not have anything that looks like my app up there? Is anybody homeless and lost? Question? No, no. Uh, just the uh, okay. What you do to the, uh, the height of the Yeah, 
So I'm being told that we're actually run, that we're actually slowly running out of time for this. So we're going to skip throwing the economy in there. We're going to go straight to the uh, incrementer setup. Now that we have this this relative layout declared, we're going to declare another linear layout inside of this that is going to have the horizontal orientation. So it's the declaration of the linear layout will go like this. Done declaring your linear layout, it should look something like mine on the screen here. But you won't see anything in the preview because there's nothing in here. And then inside of that linear layout, we're going to declare three things in this order a button, a text view, and a second button. <laughs>
So for the buttons, they're only going to be small square buttons. So the width and the height, in this case, for the buttons, are only going to be 48 density independent pixels. So they'll, they'll be declared just like this. Okay, how's it going, everybody? Do okay, so we have anything similar to what we've got going on here? <laughs> there was one thing I forgot to mention. So when your buttons appear, and they all appear on the left side here, the linear layout itself, the entire layout, will be centered horizontally inside of the relative layout that is nested. So we have a relative layout declaration here, and our linear layout declaration here, Inside of the parameters you define for the linear layout, the linear layout itself will be centered horizontally. So that means that no matter what, how many items I put in here, it'll shift them all dynamically, so this layout will be centered. And the linear layout itself, unless you require an object to be, spa to be spaced in a certain way, they'll uh, keep them all next to each other and they'll try to keep, and it'll try to keep them as centered as possible. I also think I'm going to declare a bit to match the parents. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anybody have any issues?
Okay, who else? in Android, uh, mostly switching between activities, switching views, saving data for system. And then, so what you guys are going to do, after I kind of introduce you guys to that, you're going to pull down this code from GitHub, and then you're going to use your awesome Google Foo, Stack Overflow Foo skills to figure out not only what's wrong with this app, but also fix it. So the first three teams that can fix it will receive Google Swag. Uh, so there's like some like little mechanical robot, some socks probably. I don't know, like yeah, yeah. So basically, it's gonna be a competition to see who can fix this Android app first. And if you win, you will get cool Google stuff. And there's like an 80% chance there's gonna be pizza. So yeah, come by next time. Next week. <laughs> Probably pizza. Uh, if not, there will be pizza. There will be pizza, yeah. Anyways, uh, who needs help now? Yeah. Who's still broken? Yeah, who's still broken? Thank you guys for coming, by the way. Hopefully, we'll see you all in the next. Okay. Yeah. 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 I just forgot I left it. Alright, we'll check out.